approaching the field was about 600 feet. All engines seemed to be working smoothly. over the eastern states is rising this morning and we have northwest winds along the coast. We had a beautiful trip over here and are very happy at the splendid cooperation your Navy is going, <coughs> is giving us in, prepara in preparing our round the world trip. Everything is working beautifully and I hope to see you again on our return from the world flight early next month. Thank you very much.
I want to send a greeting to my numerous American friends and invite them to take a trip with me over the beautiful Switzerland. Some of the crew, the icebreaker Malagin is sighted, anchored at Cape Flora, the southernmost point of France Dozerplan. We have been in radio communication with the Russian steamer for some time, and now we prepare to descend to deliver some very welcome mail. <laughs> The rope that you see is fastened to a drag anchor that steadies the airship while a boat from the Malagin comes alongside to get the precious sacks of letters. And here on the right is General Nobile, the Italian explorer, who is searching for his companions lost on his ill-fated polar trip in 1928. Nobile is greeting Lincoln Ellsworth, who was his companion on the tragic voyage. Now movie tone flies with the great Zeppelin into the unknown. Every man's nerves are tense with excitement and pulses beat fast. But no word is spoken as we rapidly pass the grim cliffs of desolate Franz Joseph Land with the steady whir of the motors sounding in our ears. is hurriedly called. Maps are studied, and then the professor with Ellsworth standing behind him announces that Franz Joseph Land, always known as an island, is in reality a vast peninsula. Great ice fields then come into view. It was during this part of the trip that the professor and other members of the scientific group made discoveries that for years all geographical theories regarding this region have been incorrect. With the pole practically at hand, the helmsman prepares to swing back for home. Then, with his greatest achievement accomplished, the Zeppelin's grand old commander sends a message to the world through movie tone. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe our flight was very successful. The airship has proved herself as a very suitable instrument for the exploration of the Arctic. Thank you.
city, the Graf Zeppelin glides, a ship of the sky that has crossed many oceans, circled the globe. Veteran of airliners, stalwart as any ship that ever sailed the sea, but still a thing so new as she passes over the ruins of the ancient Colosseum. Below her now is the Victor Emanuel Monument, tomb of Italy's unknown soldier. The king, with Italian Air Minister Balbo, waits patiently for her arrival, which was delayed by heavy winds, but here she is now. The Graf drops ballast and settles slowly to the ground. Expert hands guide her huge bulk to an easy landing before the admiring crowd. <laughs> King Victor then boards the Graf to look her over. The Italian monarch takes a keen interest in aviation and everything modern. And the daddy of them all rolls into Miami from the Argentine on her fourth flight to this country, a hop of over 4,000 miles. The Graf Zeppelin has flown 275,000 miles all over the globe, and she lands here with the ease of an old stager. There were 17 passengers on this trip, one of them, baby Billy Munson, 11 months old, with his sister and brother. And then, last to leave, swinging down the ladder, the veteran commander, Dr. Hugo Eckner, receives the welcome of Florida officials. Dr. Eckner piloted the Graf on a trip around the world in 1929 and has successfully flown 17,000 persons on more than 250 flights. All aboard. Leaving Miami, she's off to Chicago's Century of Progress, where this old lady will show them all her medals. Oh. 